Welcome. Um, today we're going to take a look at measuring rates of reaction. Now there are a variety of ways that we can go about measuring uh, the rate of a reaction, but the most ideal is to measure changes in concentration with respect to time. So changes in concentration are typically in moles per litre, and time is measured in seconds. Hence the unit moles per litre per second is the ideal unit for measuring the rate of a reaction. Now we can either focus on the product or we can focus on the reactant. If we focus on the product, the product tends to increase with time. And as a result, our change in product concentration is increasing and you end up with a positive rate of a reaction. If you focus on the reactant, well, the reactant is used up through the course of a reaction and it constitutes then a negative quantity. And the negative sign that's in front of this expression ensures that we finish up with a positive value. We can also look at something called an average versus an instantaneous rate. So let's take a look at an average rate. We connect the two points that are in question. In this case, what's the average rate between zero and 60 seconds? And then we measure the slope of that line. If, however, I want to measure the rate of an instantaneous reaction, say how fast it is at exactly 20 seconds, I draw a tangent at 20 seconds and measure then the slope of that line. In this particular case, we can see that the slope of the line is constantly changing, initially starting off very steep and becoming less steep. The reaction slows down through the course of time. Now, there's several ways we can compare a rate of a reaction. One such method is uh, a loss of mass. Reactions that produce gases are good, quantity, uh, good candidates for this type of reaction. And you want gases that have high molar masses, so don't try this with hydrogen. So through the course of the reaction, as the gases evolve, the mass will decrease. And we can then measure the rate of the reaction by taking that change in mass over the change in time. So we would end up with units of, say, grams per second as the rate of this reaction. Again, we're comparing rates. Now, we can also measure in a gas situation the collect the volume of gas by bubbling it through water and collecting it in the graduated cylinder, as shown here. For this technique to work, we want to make sure that the gas isn't soluble, though, in water. We can then measure the volume with respect to time and generate a graph. And then again, we can measure the rate by looking at the change in the volume of gas versus time. Another method might involve measuring the conductivity of a solution, particularly useful if you have ions in your solution, such as you would with ionic solids. Ideally, we want to have a reaction where we have ionic materials on one side and non-ionic materials on another. They make good candidates for this reaction. So if we consider the two reactions shown down below, the first one is an ideal candidate with all of these ions present on the reactant side and none on the product side. The second one has ions on both sides, so it wouldn't be as good a candidate for this method. So if I use the example that I've shown here, the concentration of ions decreases as the reaction proceeds and I can then measure the rate of the reaction by the change in the conductivity of the solution with respect to time. Another method that involves ions is the pH measurement. In particular, it focuses on the acid particle and the base particle. And we can continuously monitor uh, this solution by hooking the pH probe, say, up to a computer. If I take a look at the example I presented earlier, I can see H plus ions. So I start with an acidic solution and perhaps a fairly low pH. And as the reaction proceeds, it moves to a neutral situation as the acid is used up, perhaps a pH of 7. And I can then measure the change in pH with respect to time to get my rate of reaction. Colorimetry is another technique that revolves around the presence of a colored ion and a spectrometer. You might recall that copper ions are sort of a bluish color. So if the copper ion is appearing, it will absorb some light. And it's very important that we choose a color of light that it absorbs. So for something that's blue, I use its complementary color. I'll shine red light at the solution because the blue ions will absorb it. In this case, as the reaction proceeds, if it produces a blue ion, it will absorb more and more of the red light, resulting in an increase in absorbance. And I measure the rate then as the change in absorbance with respect to time. Lastly, I can do, use what's called a timed event. 
Some reactions have a particularly marked sign when the reaction is complete. Perhaps it changes color. Perhaps you can no longer see a piece of metal that was placed in the solution. You might define the timed event as the time to collect 10 milliliters. So if I use the example that I have over here on the light and I start the reaction off and in three seconds it changes color, the rate of my reaction would be one over the time or one over three seconds. That's how I would determine the rate. 